Hey everyone, my name is Michelle Capers and welcome back to my channel, We Need to Talk. So today we're going to be talking about three reasons why insecurities will cause you to attract the wrong man. So if you're interested in this topic, please stick around to the end of the video so you don't miss any of the important information that I want to share with you about being insecure and how it will attract the wrong man. So the first thing that will cause you to attract the wrong person is fear. So I have battled with fear for quite some time in my life. Fear of just whatever, you know, fear of the competition of it all. I don't like to compete with others. Fear of if this is the right person, that's the right person. Fear to make a decision on if I want to do this job or that job. Just fear in and of itself is very debilitating. It could cause you to make the wrong decision and it could cause you to not make a decision which is bad as well it could cause you to move too fast and then it could cause you to uh, be stifled and and hindered in moving at all so with fear in terms of choosing a man fear can work in so many different ways you all when it comes down to dating um, you can be fearful of dating or you can be fearful of getting out there and choosing the wrong mates. You could have waited some years before you started getting out there in the dating um, scene. And so now you feel a little bit behind the power curve. So now this first person that has come along in your life has approached you and you're trying to hold on for dear life. But that's not necessarily the one for you. But fear will cause you to hold on tight and grip because you don't know when the next man will come around. Also, that fear can be uh, hurting to the relationship because you can grab on too tight and that could cause the man to kind of be standoffish because you're kind of almost smothering them. So fear is working against you when it comes down to dating because I'm telling you, fear coupled with insecurities will definitely cause you to choose the wrong person the first person that comes along that just say you have a standard and this is a christian channel and we all know that we shouldn't be unequally yoked you know you don't want to be a christian and then meeting someone out in the nightclub that's just you know that that you should not do that now there's a lot of times that people are both unsaved and they get married together and they're both unsaved and then one person ends up getting saved before the next person that's totally different but for you as a christian woman uh, to be saved and looking out there in the in the world for a mate, we should not really do that. But sometimes fear will cause us to believe that, hey, we're, we're in our church home or in our local community where, you know, our, our surroundings and where our circle, you feel like there's no men there. There's nothing, um, there's no one there that is of interest to you. So fear will cause you sometimes to start looking out and creeping out into areas that you should not be creeping or thinking about about in places that you should not be going definitely when you're looking for a husband and that's what we would want you know the bible says that when a man findeth a wife he finds a good thing so we really shouldn't be looking anyways but you should prepare yourself in a matter of that husband that man can find you so you don't want fear to get into your life and you start stressing out or you start worrying about maybe your age or the future um, your time clock is ticking so you want to hurry up and get a man and the first man that comes along you know you want to get married fear will cause you to make the wrong decision and pick the wrong mate which could cause you grief and pain for the rest of your life so the second reason why being insecure will cause you to attract the wrong man is that Number two, you don't value yourself. You have to be able to get to a point, and I had struggled for many, many years not valuing yourself. And just because we're out there in the world and we're doing things and we're popular and we're, you know, invited to this or we're a part of that, and we could even be beautiful or, you know, the right size and have a job and all of that good stuff, and it's still you're insecure within yourself. You're not you're not moving in confidence and that's what I was doing I was operating you know I had came was raised in a <clears throat> a pretty decent family I had my mother and father there but there were some insecurities there within me that I don't know where it came from now I didn't know where it came from then but we all know there's a spirit and there's an enemy out there that comes to steal kill and destroy 
So when we start acting in ways that's less than being confident and being assured of who we are, we have to go back and look in the word of God and see, you know, where did we miss it and what's going on with us that we are so in, insecure, that we're so negative, you know, the negative Nancy, you know, you don't like this about yourself. You don't like your eyes. You know, you wish you was smaller. Your hair is, is too long or it's not long enough. It's not thick enough. And this, and that. you know, we as women, we will beat ourselves up. We will, we are our worst critics. So when you don't value yourself, I'm telling you from experience, you will attract that type of man that will devalue you as well. Um, people can call it whatever you want to call it as far as being um, conceited or whatever. And there is a difference be between being confident and being conceited, you know, the vanity of it. Not that, but when you get to a point where you are confident and you know whose you are and you know who you are, you will start attracting that type of man and even females as far as friendships is concerned, even opportunities because of the confidence that you carry. So devaluing yourself is the worst thing that you can possibly do if you are trying to find a good man, because I promise you that uh shifty man that man that that's crooked that man is half man and half boy they will sniff you out and they will find you because you are smelling like you need you're smelling like you don't value yourself you're smelling insecure and if they're an insecure person in and of themselves, they're not trying to go after the powerhouse woman because they feel like they can't get that woman. So they're going to find you. And then when they find you coupled with number one, the fear, and then you devaluing, devaluing yourself, then you're automatically going to gravitate to this person because you don't want to go through this cycle again of trying to find somebody else, right? So you're going to latch on to this person this this half of a man that really doesn't know who they are but that is putting on a good front because they watched a couple of episodes and they read a couple of books and they looked online a little bit and you know got a little bit of knowledge on how to get a man a woman but don't know how to keep a woman then you're gonna go ahead and yield to this and get yourself in a situation so devaluing yourself, not valuing yourself, knowing, not knowing who you are, not loving yourself first, not, not because he said that you were cute. You know that you're cute, not because they said that you were beautiful. You know that you're a beautiful person and beauty doesn't, it's not just about on the outside, you all. Beauty comes from within. So when you're confident in yourself from within, that's going to permeate on, on the outside and you're going to automatically be beautiful. And then that's going to attract a certain type of person because you have a standard and you're just not going to settle for less. So you all don't forget number two, the devaluing of yourself. If anybody is going to love you, you need to love you first. And then everybody else comes next. Don't ever, you don't ever want to be to that point where you're so insecure and you're so desperate and you are so malnourished when it comes down to affirmation that you need the attention from anybody by any means necessary. This is where you're going to start getting into trouble. And number three, Another problem with being insecure and how that will attract the wrong type of man is that you believe that a man is supposed to complete you. That is a double negative, double negative. No man is supposed to complete you. I battled with this. I have for years of my life, even from a young child growing up, my, my, my take on life is I just wanted to get married. I'm 10 years old thinking about boys, 13 years old, nothing but boys, 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 boys. I have had so many missed opportunities in my life because I'm thinking that when you are with someone or when a, a man wants you, that means you're special. That means there's something good about you. That means that you're beautiful. And if he doesn't want you or if you are single, then that means that something is wrong. The devil is a liar. That does not mean that you all, I don't want you all to fall into the traps that I have fell into and be bit by this insecurity bug that will cause you, cause you to cost yourself so much of time, pain, hurt, rejection, you name it. 
for years. And sometimes you'll get yourself in situations that will cost you the rest of your life. And you just don't want to do that from being insecure, from being to, from devaluing yourself and then thinking that a man is here to complete you. There is nobody, no other person here on this earth that can satisfy you, that can give you hope, that can get make you full of joy other than Jesus himself, God himself. And when you start to see that for real, not just cliches, not just something that we do on Sundays, not just something that we do to get on a channel and quote a, a scripture to make people believe that we are, we love God. No, I, this, I was raised in church, <clears throat> but the church wasn't in me. And I struggled for many, many years, for many years, because I really didn't take God serious. I, I did not take God serious. I did not consult God on everything. I didn't consult God on anything. So majority of my life, I've always did what I wanted to do. And then I will consult God on the things that I couldn't do. And that's not the way that we are supposed to perceive God. God is, he's God, he's Elohim. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He created us all. He knows everything about us. He knows our end from our beginning. So how much more would it be better for us to consult the person that made us, consult the person that has the blueprint from our, for our lives on what we should do, who we should marry, where we should live, what even career that we should have. And God has, you know, gifted us in so many different areas to do whatever. A lot of us have, you know, so many different gifts and talents. We can be whatever we want to be. As long as it's uh, legitimate, I think that God has given us the liberty to make decisions, right? Um, there are specific things that he has told us what to do and what not to do, i.e. when it comes down to a mate, don't be unequally yoked because that will cost you. And then, But you also have to know just because you're in church and they're in church, that doesn't mean that you're equally yoked. And that's a video for another time. Um, but to think that a man will complete you is the worst thing you can possibly think as a young woman, especially you're just starting off. You know, you're fresh. You're just moving out of your parents' home. The, the world is your oyster. And the only thing that you got on your mind is a boyfriend. Or when am I going to ever get married? Or, you know, just anything that has to do with a man instead of focusing on your career, focusing on first and foremost God and your relationship with God and making sure that you're keeping him first and foremost in your life. Then, you know, everything else will follow. The Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you, right? So this is what we have to do. Put God first. And when we put his stuff first, then he will, you know, give us the desires of our heart, you know, as long as those desires are in line with his will. So, and, and he knows what's best for us. So I always want to be in a position, you know, as of now, I, I wasn't like this for many, many years. And it's so the freedom and the liberty that I have been experiencing within this last year of trusting him, even when I can't trace him, even when I don't understand everything, even when I'm still in tears, even when the answer has not been in, been provided as far as the manifestation of it, because we know when we pray, we believe that we receive right then. And then when we do that, we have whatsoever we said, right? But it, the manifestation of it is not then. So even going through that waiting time between the promise and the palace, you know, there is there has just been a lot of um, growth there with me when it comes down to when you really rely on God and you depend on that on those scriptures to become rhema in your life. Um, it kind of takes the place of you focusing on everything and anybody else that does not even matter. Because God knows what's best for you and he knows what you have need of. And he knows what would be, who would be good for you and who wouldn't be good for you. And, and at the end of the day, it's you and him. That's more than the majority than for you to have everybody else and not him. You would rather have God and no one else. And I know it might seem lonely. That, that might seem like that's not fair or that's not a happy life. 
I'm telling you all, if I had the chance to do some things over again, I would do it. There's points in my life where I wouldn't go anywhere if I wasn't going with someone. I could not be by myself. I had to have a boyfriend or I had to have a girlfriend. I couldn't just go shop by myself. I couldn't go eat by myself. Honey, now I will go in order like I am. Queen Elizabeth by myself. Now I'm crying to have some time alone when those times were before because I love to be able to read the word of God or just even just meditate or just listen or just be quiet and hear his instructions on what do I need to do. And even if he doesn't say anything, just being in his presence sometimes and just, you know, shutting off everything else around you is a great place to be. So if you all can start that at the start of your life, at the onset, before you leave your parents' home, before you go into the military, or before you go off to college, or before you just move out, you know, to your own place, if you have a good foundation, and if you put God first, you won't ever get to a point where you're thinking that you need a man to complete you. There's no man out there in this world that will be able to complete you. And the thing is, honestly, you all, as women, we're not 100% as well. So there could be a man, you know, looking for 100% of, of a woman to complete them. And that, that's not the way that marriage works. That's not the way that relationships work. Yes, he should bring his 100% and you will bring your 100%. It's not 50-50 when it comes down to a relationship. Don't even start thinking like that because you're going to come in half in. And, and he comes in with his half, you're going to have a mess on your hand. You need to be praying for a man that loves the Lord, that is 100%. He will love you. He fears the Lord. And then you need to be doing the same thing on the other side so that when you all come together, um, it will be beautiful and there will be nothing lacking. So yes, this is what you want to do. You want to take heed to these three points when it comes down to insecurities and how it will stifle your life. Remember, being insecure will cause you to attract the wrong man in these categories. And number one, fear. Number two, you don't value yourself. And number three, you're thinking that a man will complete you. These are no-nos and these are negatives and these are things that are that comes about through insecurity that will definitely cause you to attract something that you really don't want. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, leave me some comments in the description box below. Let me know what you think. Have you ever been in a situation where you have operated off of fear and made a haste decision, a permanent decision in a temporary state? This is something that I have done over and over and over again in my life and I have messed up some things. But again, we have God and his grace and his mercy. He has given us to be able to repent and turn and therefore put our lives on the on back on track you know so all is not lost you know restoration is here and he will restore uh back to you everything that you have lost so leave me some comments and let me know i would love to hear your stories of what you have uh, done even to help yourself come out of that in insecure state you know definitely we need to use the word of god at all times because anything that we face and go through in life it's going to be found in the word of God, but we have to practice it because the word works for those who work the word. So go ahead and like, and subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you will be the first to receive all of the new videos that I put out on this channel. We need to talk.